Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Rick's Garage. I am, of course, your host, Rick the Welder, and on today's episode, Phase 1 starts picking up some momentum as I tackle the front and rear sway bars on Miss Vicky. Now, last episode, you saw me cover the suspension upgrade, and personally, I think if you do one, you have to do the other. If you do these two upgrades, the handling on the car is going to be absolutely unbelievable. So we got a pretty big job ahead of us, so let's dive in. I want to let you guys know that I've already removed the underpan on the car, which I'll show you how to do in another episode. All right, first couple things that you're going to need to get removed in order to remove this front sway bar is the sway bar end link that's attached on the sway bar and on the strut with two 14 millimeter fasteners to so get those loose as well. You're going to need to remove the tie rod end, which is on this side of the spindle, and it is a 19 millimeter nut on top. Now, if you don't have a pickle fork handy to split the tie rod, that's fine. Just make sure that you strike the spindle with the hammer and not the tie rod itself. Otherwise, there's a good possibility that you might ruin it and it might come apart prematurely. Lullabies get sung to you, numb, dumb, nullified, humdrum rappers who seem colorblind to the spectrum of style I select from anyone I Remember, make sure it's the spindle that gets hit with the hammer and not the tie rod end. Okay, so the next step brings us to the interior. What we're going to do is disconnect the steering column from the steering rack input shaft. That way, this won't get hung up during the removal. This plastic cover plate has just two push in clips. More importantly, is at the steering knuckle, is this right here. You can see the factory has already marked the alignment between the bushing and the input shaft on the steering rack. What I'm going to do is take my paint pen and extend that up onto the U-joint itself. Like so. That way when we take this 10 millimeter off and we split this when we go to put it back together, this is going to be aligned nicely with the input shaft and it won't make the steering wheel sit all wonky. Now that that bolt is removed, it's just a matter of separating the end of the U-joint from the input shaft of the steering rack. You may notice in this next shot that I've removed the drive shafts and the spindles, and although it did give me a little bit more room to work with, it's not absolutely necessary in order to drop the subframe. If you end up doing this yourself, at the bare minimum, you're going to need to loosen the lower ball joint from the control arm in order for it to separate. There's just a couple of last few things that need to come off the bottom of the car before the subframe can come off. So the first thing is this little bracket here that runs underneath the radiator. It's held in with two 14 millimeter bolts on either end. As well, we're also going to need to take off these reinforcement brackets on the back. It's a 17 millimeter bolt nut going through the unibody. And as well, what I'm going to do is disconnect the rear engine mount. In order to do that, you can see that the bolt comes in from the passenger side. So I'm going to drop that mid pipe as well going underneath the engine. Well, don't forget about the, the exhaust hangers behind the engine mount that need to get popped loose. And once all that stuff's out of the way, the subframe can come down, and there's actually only six bolts that hold this into the unibot. So we've got one up front here. One just where the lower control arm mounts, and then underneath the reinforcement bracket. So once the, all those six are down, Subframe should come out quite easily. So you definitely get an extra set of hands to help you lower this if you're doing it yourself, if you're not on a lift, because it's going to get pretty awkward if you're crawling underneath it. All right, subframe is out, and all that there's left to do to get that front sway bar out is to remove the steering rack. So it's just going to be removal of a couple of bolts, and we'll take a look once that's out of the way.
The rear sway bar is much more straightforward than the front. To take the rear sway bar out, we're going to remove the 12 millimeter bolt on the sway bar end link. What I'd suggest is you undo the end links first to relieve any potential stress that might be on the sway bar. It makes the removal that much easier. Once the two end links are removed, then we're going to remove the bracket that's holding down the sway bar by the bushing with the two 14 millimeter bolts holding it down. And of course, repeat the same on the other side. All right guys, that's it for part one. While you're here, hit that subscribe button down below and you'll get an instant notification as soon as part two is uploaded and available. And as always, thanks very much for watching.